Do you want to feel more confident in the bedroom? Then you should try out Blue Chew, a prescription medication service that eliminates embarrassing doctor's visits. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, my guest is very special indeed. She is an award-winning performer. She's written and directed more than 50 scenes and 15 films and was named the Avian Lesbian Performer of the Year in 2022. Please welcome Serene Siren. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thanks for having me today. No, of course. I... You know, after we did that twisty scene together where you had to climb on top of me naked, uh-huh. wouldn't you guys like to know those details? Um, <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> it was. I just thought like, oh my gosh, here's this really like bright, wonderfully engaging woman and wouldn't she be fun to talk to for an hour or so? Well, thanks for having me. Of I, I definitely enjoyed that day. It was a huge dream come true to me. Um, I had been wanting to work with you since I started. I remember bringing you some organic tulips like way back when I don't know five six years ago and it just took that long and I remember you telling me you'll work for twisties but it might take a while they yeah you know they don't always choose people right off the bat but it was worth it because I feel like when I finally showed up I was ready for it yeah and it was just a fantastic time you also came in at a good time because twisties has been so you know I worked for them for like over 12 years it was like their longest running producer and they went through a lot of transitions Mm -hmm. um and when I shot you was at the point that they had really like I think like finessed the site into you know that like true lesbian glam site and Mm. they put like more money into the shoots and so I had a better budget so everything just looked better and the scripts were better so I loved the script yeah and I loved my my pairing too Charlie Summer is so to die for yes (laughs) so for those of you who want to check the scene out it is on twisties.com it's called fluffing her folds Mm -hmm. and it's um Serene and Charlie Summer and Serene plays like this hoity-toity um, woman in a rich hotel. Girl. Yeah, rich girl. <laughs> and uh, Serena's like the demure um, maid. And it actually was pretty fun because mm-hmm. you got to throw a dildo at her. Yeah. <laughs> which was harder to set up than people would think. <laughs> it was, especially because I was all slippery from the bath. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't want to slip, but I, I thought we did a great job. I thought we did too. Yeah. So basically the idea was that Serene asked for extra fluffy towels and mm-hmm. Charlie brought them. And then Serene goes to take a bath and Charlie's watching her and she's like fucking herself with the suction cup dildo, <laughs> which was difficult because <laughs> you're wet, you're slippery and then, of course, you're in a bathtub. All the surfaces are slippery. Yeah. You have to, like, fuck the dildo and not, like, fall over and crack your head open, which is always, <laughs> like, my biggest nightmare. Right, right. As a director, you have to be careful of every little detail like that. Dude, I hate bathroom scenes because okay. I'm always scared someone's going to crack their head open. Mm. And well, he, I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> you did not. And then not only did she have to do all of that, but she had to, like, throw the dildo at Charlie and we had to get a shot of, like, the dildo being thrown at the camera, but not like actually hitting the camera and Uh then like the reaction shot. And First and only time I've ever got to throw a dildo, by the way. Really? Yeah. I haven't incorporated that in my personal life yet. Well, hopefully it won't (laughs) be the last. I hope so too. I mean, perhaps this could be like a whole thing, like dildo throwing. (laughs) I mean, we can start our own league. (laughs) If you think about it, you know, like if you were able to throw it with the suction cup side. Oh, yeah, and then so get it to, like, stick to, to the something? tit or something. Oh, I was just going to say a wall. I mean, you just raise the stakes <laughs> by putting it, putting it to a tit. Yeah, well, I did just have a girl recently. I don't know if you know Kiana Dior, but she's got, I don't know, H's or some gigantic titties, and she just recently stuck the dildo to her tit, and then she was fucking my pussy with a dildo suction cup to her tit, and I was thinking it was the hottest thing I've ever seen before. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going a little off topic here, but you remind me of a scene that I shot with Cherie DeVille okay. and 
uh, Chris Scott. Okay. And it was a Super Bowl thing, and Cherie had to stick a suction cup dildo on her football helmet <laughs> and, like, fuck Chris with it. See, I'd be down for that. <laughs> I just remember filming that going, this is the most ridiculous scene I've ever shot, but thank God it was Cherie because <laughs> only Cherie could fuck somebody with a suction cup dildo on a football helmet and make it look hot. Well, and Kristen Scott is also phenomenal, mm-hmm. so I can see that being great. Was an interesting scene. <laughs> so speaking of our ridiculous industry, uh-huh. that is so much fun and so silly. Mm-hmm. How did you get to where you are today? Oh well. Um... Originally, I saw in one of the questions that you'd asked about how I first got got started, and it was with the furniture company. Mm-hmm. Um, their name is Tantra Chair. Okay. And it took them a good four or five months to convince me to do it, but eventually I ended up shooting with my now ex. Uh, these softcore films more or less doing all the different incredible positions that you can do on the tantra chair, which is one of these swoops, Mm -hmm. you know, it's this shape. And I ended up doing three different films with them. And this is back when I still had breastfeeding titties. So I was Mm -hmm. 19 and I had an all natural body and it didn't technically show any penetration, but we did incredible scenarios Mm -hmm. on this piece of furniture and they ended up going viral more or less overnight oh wow and so of course the industry caught wind of that and wanted me to enter the industry full on but I've never been interested in the males in the industry for whatever reason I I bond with dick So Mm. for me to kind of be passed along all the different men in the industry wasn't wasn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So when I entered, I first did in 2013 under a different name. And unfortunately, it was after I stopped breastfeeding. So now I had like the flat tires. (laughs) And so I just wasn't happy with what I was seeing coming out Mm -hmm. after things started getting published, you know, about six months later. So I exited. And then once my children got older and I got a new man who I'm now with for seven years, I had a lot more support at home Mm -hmm. and a lot more drive and dedication towards wanting to be what I'd always wanted to be, which is a model. I Mm -hmm. remember being eight years old and not even having any teeth and going to all these different modeling competitions, wanting to be signed to be a model. And I got voice acting offers. But nobody wanted to sign me because they kept telling me, you need to wait till your teeth grow back. Mm. So how, wait, how many teeth were you missing? I mean, I, for whatever reason, lost like all four of them at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a little nubbin. Uh, it, was, it was pretty embarrassing, but I still wanted to do it. It's what I had always wanted. I mm-hmm. was acting in multiple plays since I could walk and performing in gymnastics since I could walk. So I'd always been a performer, Mm -hmm. but I just wasn't happy with the way that, in my opinion, I didn't look, I didn't look healthy. I didn't look glowing. My, my home life wasn't stable Mm. at the time. So when I came back as Serene, it had been after I had been camming for a little bit at home and really loving the feedback I was getting. I got some new boobies. And I thought they looked great, and I wanted to show them off. Which you crowdsourced, is that right? Yes. My my first set of titties, I, I had to get them fixed along the way, but my first set of titties, I did actually use um, myfreebreastimplants.com. That's a site? That's a site. I don't know if it's still a site, but back when I did it, it funded my my breasts. So they collect all the money, kind of like, I guess, go. F- Uh, GoFundMe or Kickstarter does, Mm -hmm. where you can't access the money until you reach your goal. Right. And they don't pay you. They pay it directly to the doctor. So you have to have your your consultation and you have to have the amount and then they pay the doctor directly. Are there only certain doctors that work under this? Yes, but my doctor that I chose 
wasn't a part of this Mm -hmm. and they only did it for me. Mm -hmm. That was the one and only time that they had ever done this site. They hadn't even heard of the site, but Mm -hmm. I connected them and it worked out great. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It was pretty cool. What do people who contribute to the fund get? So messages, I got paid per message. And this is before OnlyFans or if Mm -hmm. OnlyFans existed, I didn't know about it yet. So they pay per message and you could sell picture sets, videos, you could do live shows on there and more or less just mostly messages on my part. And then raise the money for it. And then, okay, so people are paying for these pay-per-view messages and mm-hmm. et cetera. And then would they get, because, you know, like with, with Kickstarter, at least, you get perks. Like when a project is done, you get whatever is made or yes. you get special behind the scenes. Like did they get like the first reveal of your new yes. boobs? Yes, so they okay. get the the very first before and after shots. Mm-hmm. So then you also have, um, I forget how many they make you do in terms of how many pictures, but you have to do a certain amount of after pictures mm-hmm. once they're healed. Right. And it's exclusive to that site. And right. you do what's called a, I think it was called the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. No, the Hall of Hooterville, Hooterville mm-hmm. something like that. And you get placed up there on their little Hall of Hooterville <laughs> with all the other girls that got funded. And most girls don't get funded. So I felt very, very, yeah. very lucky. Why do you think that you got funded and other people didn't? I have personality. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. And at that time, that was pretty much the only triple X stuff I was doing. Right. So it was very exclusive. Mm -hmm. And it helped that I had breastfeeding pictures that people could see what I would look like with big tits again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had the titty drop picture Mm -hmm. or videos of when they were all natural and big. Mm -hmm. And I think that people really understood why I was self-conscious about my flat tires. Yeah. And you put your body through a lot when you have a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was four years of breastfeeding because I had two two kids back to back. Wow. And I'm happy not to be breastfeeding now, but I'm really glad that I did. Yeah. It made them very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you end up getting into like full-time porn after that? So you only wanted to do girl girl. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So I ended up trying to contact pretty much every agency imaginable. And everybody said no. Because it was only girl, girl? Because it was only girl, girl. Yeah, a lot of them don't And worry. because I'm a MILF, because mm. I came into the industry as a 29-year-old, you know, my second go around as Serene, as a 29-year-old with fake tits. Luckily, no tattoos. But yeah. also, you know, I have C-section scars, and I have the titty scars. I literally don't recall seeing those when Thanks. I shot you. I've tried to make them as nice and light as possible. Yeah. But because <laughs> if they were bad, I would have suggested makeup. Right. I so like. I don't ever really use makeup on them. I, I've gotten lucky and they never keloided. They don't yeah. they weren't dark. Um I did do a tiny bit of laser, but nothing too extreme. But yeah, pretty much everybody said no. Mm-hmm. 101 modeling said, mm, okay, we'll throw you up on our website, I guess. And we'll see what happens. I did FTV MILFs as my first go around as Serene. Mm -hmm. And things kind of took off from then. Girlfriend Films ended up filming my first GG back in the industry. Mm -hmm. And people loved it. They could tell that I was really actually into girls, that I love to kiss, Mm -hmm. that I use my tongue, Mm -hmm. and that I don't tire easily. Mm. And I'm acrobatic so the positions were different for yeah. them you know don dan o'connell wrote an article about me in avn saying that even after all of his years directing now he's retired mm-hmm. but after all of his years directing i was one of the few performers that came up with brand new original positions that he'd never seen before wow can you explain one of these original positions to us i'm not going to ask you to demonstrate well one of them that i'm very famous for is one that i used on the twisty site which is the missionary tripping where like you more or less squat over her Mm -hmm. as if you're thrusting into her and she's kind of having her feet back as if Mm -hmm. there's i don't know i 
rider like I'm in a saddle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and like these various scissoring or trebbing positions are actually very important. Like they were important for twisties. Like in every script that we would get, it would say like, must have scissoring. You know, it was like very underlined. And um, yeah, they wanted like different kinds of positions. They didn't want like the typical scissoring. So Right. Which it helps that I have a, a welterweight pussy. You know, I've got this Audi pussy mm-hmm. that <laughs> kind of sinks down and can can go hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a little hideaway pussy. It it comes to show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, coming in as a MILF, as a 29-year-old, mm-hmm. um, when you finally started doing scenes, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of girls who come into the industry very young. And a lot of them say that they wish that they had waited until they were older. Some of them don't. Right. Um, it's kind of like a controversial topic, you know, should you, is 18 too young for porn, blah, blah, blah. Like, are you are you glad that you waited until you were older? Yes, because when I first started as Bella back when I was 23, mm-hmm. I did a lot of kink stuff. Mm-hmm. So electro sluts and hogtied, a very extreme Mm-hmm. situations that were these all solo girl ones or were no you these are gg you were doing girl yeah girl they're i guess fucking machines was solo yeah. but these were gg scenes uh-huh. and yeah i mean i was crying on set obviously because it's a big shock yeah i had never even though i'd always wanted to be a model i i don't want to admit it but i was very judgmental of nude models. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was doing normal modeling at 14, all the different photographers trying to prepare me for the fact that I will have to be nude if I want to make money modeling, Mm -hmm. that it's inevitable. And to just prepare for it. We're preparing you for Mm -hmm. that. Yep. And I just remember thinking, not me, not me. (laughs) So it, it was a big shock for me at 23 to go through all that. And it did take me, I think I took a, yeah, about a six year hiatus before I came back confident enough and sure of myself enough and had worked all these other jobs. You know, I had my first jobs at 13. I worked two jobs at 13 and never stopped working multiple jobs throughout Mm -hmm. the entire, I mean, even still I'm working extra jobs. So Mm -hmm. I'm definitely a worker. And I think that those extra jobs are what made me grateful for being able to make this kind of money Mm -hmm. and having that kind of mindset of this is work and you're going to have your good days and you're going to have your bad days. And some days it's going to feel like you're here to play and other days it's going to feel like, oh man, I've been here for an eternity and Mm -hmm. I just want to go home. (laughs) <laughs> I know those days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not always easy. Yeah. It's not always just, yay, pussy. Sometimes yeah. it's difficult. Sometimes it's 12 hours of dialogue until you get to the sex scene yeah. at midnight. Yeah. And then she smells like a fishbowl. And you're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going scuba diving today. <laughs> what do you do in those situations? Like, do you talk to the director? Do you talk to the girl? Because some girls are new and they don't mm-hmm. understand their own body yet. Correct. And they're not aware. Correct. And I think it's one of those things just like a smoker doesn't know that they smell like smoke. Mm-hmm. I think that a girl that smells that way is usually used to it and doesn't know that you're supposed to smell any other way. And you also like don't. You, you were not gr- always great at smelling ourselves. It was like when right. I was an alcoholic and I was drinking vodka because I thought that I, you couldn't smell it on me. Right, exactly. It comes Turns out, out you could. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. It's pretty much that same way. I have had to ask girls to douche. I mm-hmm. have had to teach them hygiene. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a girl that I really... The problem is I really like women. Mm-hmm. And so it's extra hard for me. Yeah. You know, if I was a bitch, it'd be way easy to be like, ew, you stink. Go yeah. go take care of yourself. But I do get paired with a lot of brand new girls. Mm-hmm. And it's often their very first time with a girl, mm. much less, you know, their first GG scene. It's yeah. their very first time ever with a girl. Yeah. And dudes most of the time don't care. Because yeah. first of all, they're just like spitting on the pussy and then putting their dick in it. They, yeah, they're not some, even going down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've had to tell mm-hmm. multiple women how to douche and, you know, not to use the vinegar, but to put a brand new bottle of water in it and to make sure to wipe in between the lips because there's crust there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> Not always fun, but no. there's never been a time that I've had to walk away from a scene or not be able to just kind of trudge through it mm-hmm. and make it seem like it's the best pussy ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's funny. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've worked with Aaliyah Love, right? Um, actually, no. What? I've been on set with her before, and we were supposed to do the We Like Girls together, uh-huh. but she had some family stuff come up kind of uh, last yeah. minute. So she's definitely on my wish list, but I know her and have been on set with her before. So it's funny because she actually doesn't have a sense of smell. This is oh. one of the few things that people don't, not everybody knows this about her. Okay, I didn't so, know. <laughs> So like she, that helps, she'll, she'll so joke honestly. sometimes. She's like, look, if it's like a brand new girl who like sometimes has issues. She's like, people just call me because I can't, I can't smell. <laughs> like, okay, tap in. <laughs> call Aaliyah, she'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I can see how that would be a benefit. A benefit. Yeah. In some ways. <laughs> but I'm such a. I'm kind of a smell junkie. I love mm-hmm. smelling girls. I love when you can tell the difference between the perfume and their mm-hmm. pheromones and mm-hmm. their sweat. I don't I love yeah. it. Yeah. So um you have you always been into girls? Yeah. Yeah. Not always admit it that I've been into girls, but yes, I can think of multiple, many different occasions growing up where severely attracted to girls and Kind of confusing it with jealousy mm-hmm. or competition because mm-hmm. I wanted to be like them is what I thought. But then as I got older and matured more, I realized, no, I want to be with them. Mm-hmm. Was that hard for you to accept at first? Yeah. I mean, my sister always teased me about being a lesbian. You know, she'd always kind of like put me down as being a lesbian. I'm not a lesbian. And I mean, I've been dating guys since I was 14. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always been been with guys but I've also had relationships with women now and I've had threesome like thruple relationships but in high school I mean I was always making out with girls I'd have Mm -hmm. five different girls we'd all be huddling together making Mm -hmm. out with with women Mm -hmm. I always preferred that over kissing guys yeah and I remember having hot tub experiences and just, you know, playing mm-hmm. with the pussy and be like, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. I wonder what it's like to go down on a girl, <laughs> but was pretty afraid of it still. Yeah. Yeah. And then what was your first time being with a woman? Um, in college, mm-hmm. actually. And I just did a, a scene about this with Anna Fox kind of reliving that moment because it was a woman that was dating – we are both dating two twin jocks. Oh, oh, my God. Me and my best friend, like my first boyfriend, was the twin of my best friend's okay. uh, boyfriend. Okay. So I did the same thing, except I got the uglier twin somehow. Oh, yeah. I, I guess know. mine was technically the uglier I twin, too. The... But he was also the nicer one. Mm. So, <laughs> But, yeah, we would always, I mean, I would always hear her fucking and, you know, we'd be in our different rooms And we'd come out in our little undies, and I just remember, even though I just fucked, coming out and just staring at her and loving that she would give me snacks. And, you know, we would sit there and hydrate together and talk and laugh and kind of cuddle and whatnot. And I remember just kind of having my hand on her thigh, thinking that was just getting goosebumps from it. Mm So long story short, she ended up coming over to my place, and I had a studio apartment at the time, so I was there alone, and we had been out, and she ended up whipping out a dildo out of her purse, and I was like, "What? You oh my go God, to?" This does sound like a sex scene. This yeah, is, I've literally shot this, this scene. This literally a happened. I'm like, "What are you doing with that? You you go everywhere with a dildo? Come on, Kaylani. Like seriously." And she's like, no, I brought this for you. I knew I would end up at your place tonight. And I know that you've been wanting this. I can tell. <laughs> I'm, the, like, the, I'm sorry, this wait, is a porn scene. It, well, I ended up making it into a porn scene. But this, I think, is a lot of my real experiences in life have been porn scenes. Wow. And I think that's why I fit so well here yeah. is that I'm just a very sexual person. And a lot of very sexual things have happened to me. Yeah. Sure enough, she ends up, you know, sucking on it first to get it wet, playing with my clit, and, like, does that. She didn't go down on me or anything at that time. 
Like first she just did the dildo mm -hmm. on me and we made out. And I just remember I actually finally got to touch titties and I got to play with her pussy. And I went down on her for the first time. And I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But she made me feel like I knew what I was doing. And I just never really turned back around after that. Yeah. I just, from then on, couldn't stop thinking, man, what does that girl's pussy look like? You know? <laughs> Is it an innie? Is it an outie? Is it, you know, does she have a big clit? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I really feel as though she broke the barrier for me mm -hmm. in a way that was very safe and something that was nice because she did it to me first instead yeah. of me feeling like a creep or feeling like a, a lesbian or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like we were – and then when we woke up, she spent the night. And when we woke up, we both promised not to tell. <laughs> we both promised not to tell the guys because we knew that they would be jealous and be like weirded out by it or – want to fuck us together. Bring themselves you know? into the equation. Yeah. Yes. And that's not what we did it for. We didn't do it for them. We didn't do it. That's the other thing that I liked is we didn't do it in front of them. Mm -hmm. It wasn't you know? for show. Yeah. And we yeah. weren't even like intoxicated at the time. Mm -hmm. we, it was just something we really wanted to do together. Mm -hmm. And after that, we did it a couple more times. And <laughs> then it just, she ended up going to a different college and things separated, but I'll never forget it. Do you don't, I am assuming you probably haven't had contact with her no, in a while. No, I keep hoping that she'll come back around. She's so gorgeous. She's I just, wonder if she know, like watches you from afar and just like, I, was I hoping, sodded her down this path. <laughs> she, I was hoping, yeah. But I mean, she was also very rich and her dad was pretty famous and all that. Mm. So I don't think it's something that she wanted to come out yeah. about either. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. there's a, even though... It's different than being gay males. Being a lesbian is still very looked down on. Yeah. You know, and people don't really love that yeah. still to this day. Yeah. Unfortunately. So give us your, you know, being a, a connoisseur of the pussy. Mm -hmm. um, give us some advice on your the best methods to please a woman. Oh, okay. Well, in my personal opinion, every... Every person's body is different, right? And so every pussy is different. Some women like having direct clit stimulation where you pull the hood back. And other girls like it when the hood's down. Mm -hmm. Some girls like it on one side more than the other. Some girls like side to side. Some girls like up and down. Some girls like the scoop where you go from, you know, the hole up to the clit. And other girls don't like you to go anywhere near the hole with your tongue. Mm. So I think the most important thing is one to ask, get consent, have a nice talk about what they like, um, find out if they like it really soft or if they like it really hard because mm -hmm. some girls use a lot of, let's say the Hitachi. You know, mm -hmm. if you use a lot of magic wand, you're going to want a lot harder pressure mm -hmm. on your vagina than if you don't use that. Right. So, you know, I've had different girls that literally want you to feather their pussy, meaning just the lightest touch you can possibly imagine with your tongue and with your fingers and keep the hood over. And other girls want you to pull the hood back, press on their, their pelvis, you know, like kind of where the bush is mm -hmm. or where the bush would be while you're giving them direct clit stimulation. Mm -hmm. And other girls love penetration mm. while you're doing that. So... If you put in your fingers while you're looking on the clit, that helps a lot because it keeps everything wet with your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then you can find the G spot. Mm -hmm. So I guess my my biggest advice is have the conversation and have the time of exploration because mm -hmm. they might not even know if they like it hard, soft, somewhere in between. They mm -hmm. might not know if they like it side to side or up and down. Um, you know, like Angela White has has said that she really likes more of the flat tongue mm. than the pointed tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Rising other girls really like the pointed tongue yeah. versus the flat tongue. They don't want it to feel like it's, you know, all over their pussy. They want that direct stimulation. Mm -hmm. And then once you find out what they do like, don't stop. Don't stop and be like, do you like that? <laughs> Keep the contact. Keep the contact all the way until your jaw feels like it's going to seize 
until they actually come. Mm. Because I think too often people will treat it like it's a dick, which needs kind of a lot of different techniques. You know, Mm -hmm. you need to kind of be doing all this different stuff. But a pussy most often needs the same thing consistently for a long amount of time Mm -hmm. until they finally can kind of overcome that that mental barrier there and release. So I don't know if I answered your question completely. I was actually just (laughs) going to say, I feel like you just gave me the most detailed um, crash course in like eating pussy that like I've ever heard. Okay, good. Like you were very specific and detail oriented. And most people just say like, oh, I just talk to them or just listen to them. But you like all the different methods, like the different shape of the tongue. So I feel like that was, that was super valuable. Okay, good. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. My (laughs) audience thanks you. (laughs) Good. Glad to be here for you. Let me know (laughs) if you need any more advice. (laughs) I mean, what do you do when, you know, there's, I mean, in the adult industry, we're so used to talking about um, boundaries and like consent and all that kind of stuff because it just comes with the job. But I think most people are, are very uncomfortable talking about specifics, what they like sexually. So if you're with someone who's like not comfortable like having that discussion, do you mm-hmm. just kind of read their body language and stuff like that? I think if the person is not comfortable with talking about – I guess I've been pretty specific about oral, but in my history – it's always best to start with hands Mm. because it's a little less personal. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about, you know, if they taste good or Mm -hmm. they smell, you know, they're not quite as self-conscious about it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important about using your hands first and exploring their body with your hands because you can pick up a lot of cues on what feels good by using your fingers, you know, over their clit, over their hood, around their lips, around the opening to kind of get a feel for you. You do have to be in paying attention. Mm-hmm. You have to be paying attention to what their body does. And I'm talking about the little cues, like what they're doing with their thighs, what they're doing, if they're arching more, you know, if they're moving their, their clip, you know, to come up more, to go down more, you have to kind of read that and you can find that special medium, that happy medium by using your hands first. And that's kind of how I've learned if they're not good with talking about it or if they don't even know, if you do the exploration with them and, you know, you're there, you're using your hand and then that way your your face is up here near Mm -hmm. their ears, near their neck, near their erogenous regions to communicate with them. And explore it with them so that they don't feel quite so like, oh, she's yeah. going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel as abrupt. Right. And it can feel more mm-hmm. like something you're doing together versus all of a sudden someone's like on, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to take a quick commercial break and give you some time to absorb all of that advice. <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew. Are you looking for ways to improve your sex life? Do you want to feel more confident and more in control? Then you need to try Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a prescription medication that is designed to help men with erectile dysfunction. It's a chewable tablet that is easy to take and discreet to use. It's an online prescription service, so there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Plus, it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. If you're ready to take your sex life to the next level, then you should try Blue Chew. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HOLLY, to receive your first month for free. Hey guys, we are back. So Serene, um, we, you know, kind of touched on your um, positions that, Mm. you know, were very unique and agile. So you were a gymnast, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that and how you incorporated that into your scenes. Okay. Yeah. I was a competitive gymnast for many, many years. 
almost became homeschooled over it, but my parents ended up getting a divorce, and gymnastics is very expensive. Mm. And the gym that I had to go to was an hour away each way. It was just kind of a lot, Mm -hmm. you know? But I do think that that's one of the places where I developed attraction because everyone's flipping around in tiny little leotards Mm -hmm. and very confident about their bodies and their body's abilities. So I believe that I transferred my gymnastics experience not only acrobatically or flexibility-wise, but also Mm performance-wise because no matter what anybody says, it's a nerve-wracking business Mm -hmm. to be in front of all these cameras all all this time and having to learn all these lines and trying to actually please an Mm all-star. It's it's difficult. So I think that the gymnastics gave me not only the ability to, you know, point my toes and put my leg up over my head. Thank the fucking Lord. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I never had to tell you to point your toes. But that's part of that body awareness that got ingrained in me from an early age to, you know, the the judges are looking from the toes up to your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And... I definitely think that that gave me plenty of tools for success in this industry as well as confidence and, you know, even though I'm slouching right now, posture yeah. and the ability to stand in heels. And if I can do a backflip on a high beam, then I can be in 69 for 10 minutes straight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's uh, pretty fun, but I definitely think that the flexibility comes into play when you're trying to get your – your thigh out of the way Mm -hmm. because a tongue is only so long. It's way harder to film and to position lesbian sex than it is boy, girl, where Mm -hmm. you've got a a nine inch long that they can totally pull away and still Mm -hmm. get the penetration. So I definitely think that the flexibility has helped me being able to open up to the camera and pop my pussy up Mm -hmm. and having the back strength has been, incredibly helpful because everybody wants you to do that pose where you know you're you're in your heels with your legs open and then you have to turn all the way around and Um, smile at the camera you know you're you break your back every day in this job yeah Yeah. so that definitely has helped me a lot in the industry just having strength and Mm -hmm. I guess resiliency and knowing what it's like to be sore Mm -hmm. and not let that be debilitating but Mm -hmm. to be instead proud of it Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sore because I worked hard. Right, right. Instead of, oh, I can't do this anymore. Right, right. right. <laughs> you also do female wrestling, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually one way that I ended up getting popular as Serene is that I um, am murky champ over at Evolve Fights, Les uh-huh. Evolve Fights, um, Ariel X's site. But I still do cat fighting to this day for DT Wrestling here and Fem Fighter Success. So tell us a little bit about... About those, because I've actually never shot like a full wrestling scene. Okay, is it stage? Is it choreographed? Like, how does that whole thing work? There's different kinds. Um, some of the stuff that I've done for Ariel X, for example, there's a couple different sites I've worked with her and for her on that are not scripted and they are real. And so then your um, opponent has to have some training. Yes, and I technically don't necessarily have any jujitsu training. My dad was a championship wrestler, so I think I just oh. have it in me. I don't know. I'm a lot stronger than I look. I, I'm kind of fierce, and I'm very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not necessarily easy to beat me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so some of the sites are completely non-scripted, and you really do – go hard. I remember my toes were, I couldn't feel my toes after one. I was getting body slammed. I actually had to fix my tits after one of them because she kept body slamming me and I went too hard. (laughs) But I, I just love it. But the sites that I am working for right now, like DT Wrestling, they are scripted. They're more or less customs Mm -hmm. to where the guys sometimes will give you a 25 page script and they're sitting there drawn on blood or you know, drawing on scratch marks on you and stuff. So some of them I can go from being very, mm, I don't want to say demure, but I guess that's the best word I can think of right now, but very low key. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm the loser from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So she's got me on her shoulders, you know, turning me around and slamming mm-hmm. me down on the ground. I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> do you, being a competitive person, do you kind of like hate being cast in that role? At first. Yeah. At first, definitely. I had a hard time knowing that I was a loser. Mm -hmm. But now I've learned that that's the easy role. Oh, that's true. It's the easy role to be like, <laughs> oh, you're slamming me into the ropes again. <laughs> oh, you're punching my pussy. <laughs> Whereas if you're the opposite one and you're sitting there and you have to sprint to like, you know, get the girl and put her over your shoulders and put her in back breakers and mm -hmm. doing all the punches and stuff, it it's definitely more tiring. Yeah. And all those, there's never a single day that I'll just do one in a day. So you're doing like three or four of these matches in a day. So by the end of the day, yeah, you're tired. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get in my car and drive home. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your favorite kinds of films to make like do you like to do features do you like to you prefer gonzo do you prefer wrestling scenes like do you have a specific kind that you really enjoy doing i guess i do really like doing features mm. because growing up i always wanted to be an actor i always wanted to be a model um but mostly an actress i loved mm -hmm. learning lines i loved being able to test my mind and portray that type of person mm -hmm. and it's just nice to be somebody different mm. you know a lot of the stuff that I've been doing is stepmom stepmom this stepmom this stepmom and what a surprise I mean mm. I get it it sells and I yeah I can't diss it because that's a huge chunk of my fan base mm -hmm. but damn it's nice not to be a stepmom mm -hmm. on any given day when I show up and I get to be a you know a, a lifestyle coach or I get to be a doctor or I get to be a Rich bitch at a hotel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love that because, as you know, as a as a mother, you've got to be very uh, exact every day, and it's a lot of dishes, and it's a lot of laundry, and it's a lot of like really so much laundry, repetitive, <laughs> mundane stuff, and you're just constantly saying the same things to your children over and over again. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. That's really not glamorous at all. So oh, you were speaking to me so deeply right now. Yeah. So it's really nice to show up on set and be someone totally different. Yeah. And I guess maybe being a Gemini, I, I have those different sides of me mm -hmm. that love to be stimulated. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yeah, I love doing features. I love getting big scripts. I'm not daunted by it. Instead, mm -hmm. I feel yeah, I get nervous, of course, but the nervousness usually fades when I get there. Yeah. I seem to be most nervous on the way. Yeah. You know, making sure I get my test, making sure I get there safely, making yeah. sure that no one cancels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Are there any feature, favorite feature films that you've shot? Oh, yeah. I just did Women's World for mm -hmm. adult time. Okay. And that one was so cool because it was one of those things where we woke up and men didn't exist anymore. Oh, interesting. And so, you know, of of mice and women mm -hmm. was the book and like everybody's IDs were now women and you couldn't even look up the term man in on Google or in the dictionary. It didn't oh, exist. Guys didn't exist. And so I was one of the few that still remembered that I had a husband mm -hmm. and I had a stepson, mm -hmm. you know? Of course, well, of course you had yeah. a stepson. Yeah, of course. But <laughs> Was your stepdaughter still around? It turned out to be stepdaughter. I'm okay. like, what? Who are you? What are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but it was a really very interesting script that mm -hmm. I thought they did incredibly good on, really good job doing mm -hmm. it and filming it. And there's a drone oh. scene where, you know, I was all, out in this field, what's happening? Why is everything so different? I can't yeah. place my finger on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a cool one. You also do writing and directing too, right? Yeah, yeah. I've um, written and directed quite a few, um, mostly for girlfriend films, but also for adult time. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a little bit of a break doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly because, well, one, COVID kind of messed everything up. Uh, the movies that I were was doing were very specific. So Fit Chick Click, for instance, everybody had to be very fit and had to be a good listener because I was actually making them do conditioning and actually making them work out and, you know, hanging on bars, getting your pussy now and, <laughs> and doing tripping battles and stuff. So uh, with the rate of cancellation that's currently happening, I, I just didn't want to deal with that. Same thing with yogasms. You have to have very flexible girls that are willing to do all the different positions. Mm -hmm. And 
I had a hard time, to be totally honest, shutting my director mind off because one of the keys to being a great director in porn is having kinks or having kind of like a perv twist on each of these different films. So, you know, I'd be sitting there eating at like chilies and sexualizing the waitress or, you know, sexualizing the, the entire event. And so I just felt as though my mind needed to not do that right now. Yeah. Like I need, I don't know. No, I know what you mean. So when I was directing a lot, mm-hmm. um, I almost couldn't enjoy movies because right. all I did was think about how, how to the turn shot, it into, mm-hmm. like each shot, like the angle that they did, what that camera too. was that? Were they on a dolly? Is that a steady cam shot? Yeah. How is it lit? Like, yeah. And then the I'm like editing. looking at their eyes. Oh, they have too many lights in their eyes <laughs> or, oh, they don't have enough light on their, exactly. Yeah. So. It takes you out of the, out of the film because you're just thinking about the technical aspects of it. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't really loving that part of it. Mm-hmm. I, I realized that. I really am a performer. Yeah. And I love being able to show up, do my work, leave with a check. Yeah. And it's a lot. I wouldn't say it's less work, but it's a different kind of work. It is. Like being a performer. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. Whereas a director, uh, not only are you dealing with, well, it'd be different maybe if I was directing other people's writings, but me, you know, I was also always writing. So I'd be up till two o'clock in the morning writing and writing and writing and then having to edit it and blah, blah, blah. But then you also are dealing with the agents. Yeah. You're dealing with the girls themselves, you know, having I, to. I think what a lot of people don't recognize um, if you don't work in the adult industry is that as a director in the adult industry, you're not just a director. You're also the producer. Mm-hmm. Like, because in mainstream, I remember when I first um, worked on a big mainstream shoot. Well, actually, I mainstream because it wasn't really mainstream but it was for playboy tv right so it was okay. a big production yeah um and they had all these different producers there was like a line producer and then there's like the you know the story producer okay. and, like, and i was like wait there's like different producer levels that are handled by different people because yeah, i didn't have that luxury i'm <laughs> the producer only one i do yeah. all of the things yeah um and the director and Sometimes a stylist, also exactly. sometimes the PA. Uh, the like, set, I mean, I it was just the me art director. And the, it was me and another camera person on set. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah, there, we didn't. That's we didn't lot. even have a PA. We didn't yeah. have you know a talent liaison. We didn't have any a wardrobe stylist. You know, so you're sitting there. You do everything. Having, uh, everything. Everything. You're. Day never stops or ends. Yeah. It's just, it all bleeds into one. And <laughs> for me, I guess it also doesn't help that I don't live in the cities that I'm directing and producing in. Yeah, so then hard. I'm away from family. I'm away from home. I don't get that reset. It it was just a lot. Yeah. And I, I'd love to keep directing and producing eventually again, but only if I have more crew. Yeah. Only that if is I like- have more help. That is honestly, that is the most important thing. Like when I started getting bigger budgets for shoots and I was able to hire like more crew, like fuck man. Yeah. Made such a big difference because before I had to shoot camera and direct because I didn't have the budget for two cameramen. Yeah. And like, you know, then I did and I was like, oh my God, I could actually sit back now and like look at both camera angles because I could only look at mine because I was shooting my camera. I didn't know what this person was getting. Right. And like, you know. I mean, it made such a huge difference, I feel like, in the workflow and the quality of the product, too. Correct. The quality of the product is huge because I know that there was a couple different films that we literally couldn't get anybody to fill in. So then guess who has to fill in? Mm -hmm. Me. Because I had my test. Yeah. You know, so then I'm having to put the camera on a tripod. Yeah. And you're not going to get nearly the quality on a tripod camera. I mean, yeah, I obviously had my B camera guy, too. Yeah. But he wasn't even that trained either. Yeah. So I really feel as though I had a lot of fun and I made some killer movies. But if I ever start directing again, I definitely want more help. Yeah. And I don't want to have to act in any of my films. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to stay behind the camera if that's my job that day. And especially with the way that the whole Me Too movement's happening, it just got really dicey. And not having mm-hmm. any extra witnesses It'd be really easy for someone to be like, oh, the director did this or, Mm -hmm. you know, the director 
filmed with me. <laughs> yeah, and also you like know, crossing just... crossing that line where like you're the talent and the director and yeah, that that can I can see how that would be difficult. Yeah, cuz then you also have models egos too to deal with. Mhm. And that was one of my least favorite things is having to tell girls that showed up on set that they couldn't be in the movie because they had X, Y, and Z going on. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to send one girl away because of a cold sore. I had to send another girl away because she had hives all over her body. And, you know, it re that is hard. So hard. It's really that, hard. Do you think that was more difficult as well for you too? Because you're also talent. Like these are girls that you could end up yeah. being paired with in a scene exactly. down the road. That's awkward. Exactly. And those are girls that I handpicked. Yeah. You know, I handpicked everybody in my in my movies. Mm -hmm. So for me to have to go and be like, I know you just drove or flew all the way here, but you can't be in my movie. Yeah. Also like... We all of the, yeah, I mean, I've had to have that conversation too, where I'm like, these things happen, totally understandable, yeah. not your fault that this happened, but also like you can't show up like that yeah. and think that we're going to put you on camera. Yeah, and one of the girls that had the, the hives all over, she's like, well, I already took two Benadryl and, you know, she's sitting there just shaking. And I'm like, you're not going to be, you don't want, you don't want this scene to come out either. You don't want to see this. You, you don't yeah. want this out there. Yeah. I know it's hard, but we will rebook you just go heal yeah, and come back when you're ready. Yeah. You know, and that's, yeah. I know. And that's the other thing too. I, I think that it also, I think depends on your agent because mm. some agents really put in the girl's head, like you show up no matter what, right. even if you're sick, even if you're have hives, you know, yeah. and girls will show up because they think, Oh, if I cancel, like then they'll never book me again. But it's like, if you cancel and you have like a legitimate reason. Yeah, it's totally like, different. we understand. And in the call sheets, it's very specific. We say if you have a rash, if you have big bruises, if you have any open wounds, if blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a whole paragraph in there mm -hmm. saying, take a picture, send it before you come to set. I'll yeah. let you know if it's good or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so the fact that they're ignoring that and still showing up, thinking that no one's going to catch it. Yeah. But I, with... With ringworm, with with herpes, with all these different things that are communicable, you can't fuck around with it mm -mm. because especially as director, guess who gets sued? Guess who's held liable? Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of dicey. Yeah, that's tough. Um, what are your goals in the industry or have you achieved them all? I do feel like I've achieved them. Mm. I worked for you. Oh, I'm here. Well, then you can quit now. <laughs> yeah, that is the ultimate. <laughs> um, I I won AVN Performer of the Year, Lesbian Performer of the Year. That was huge. Were I got you to, expecting that? No, no. I was actually just got done Jello wrestling um, Candace Dare, <laughs> and I literally I was driving home. It was about I don't know eleven o'clock. I'm driving home, and I remember it was a really nice big moon, and I'm I'm sitting there picking. It's not real jello. It's like these jello beads. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there. I still have like jello beads in my ear and picking out. And I start to get all these congratulations messages on my phone. And I'm just like kind of looking at them like, what? So I, I literally pulled over on the side of the road and just started shaking and screaming because Charlotte Stokely was saying, congratulations. I'm so happy to pass the crown on to you. And I just I had to sit there on the side of the road for a good 45 minutes because I was Wow. When was so this? Incredible, uh, so incredulous. Um, I guess not January this year, but January last year. So it year. was virtual? Yeah, it was a virtual one. Right. And I didn't even, I thought like maybe in a few years from now, mm -hmm. I was nominated obviously, but yeah. I didn't think for the life of me that I would win for another few years. Yeah. I mean, Charlotte Stokely didn't start winning until she was eight or nine years into mm -hmm. being a GG only. Mm -hmm. And now she's won like everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I... I really didn't think it was my turn yet. Yeah. So I was not there and I felt really bad that I wasn't there. But it also like it was virtual. So it's like, it's yeah, like okay that you weren't there, you know? Yeah. And so this year I was excited because they had me present. Mm -hmm. So I got to give rewards to Maitland Ward and to Amaranth, who I've been a fan of Amaranth for a while. I've watched her Twitch for a long time. And mm -hmm. obviously Maitland Ward is just stunning and so talented. Mm -hmm. So... I felt very, very lucky to be up there with everybody. Amazing. Yeah. So there's not, nothing else that you're aiming for, huh? I just want to keep working. 
And I just want to keep doing it because there's definitely a lot of girls on my on my goal list mm. still to okay. this day. <laughs> okay, so your your goals are specific women. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. A good, that's a good goal. <laughs> and then I guess yes to eventually start directing again and mm. do it in a way that I'm really proud of. Yeah, yeah, with more crew. With more crew. Give her a bigger budget, people. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Serene, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. Can you tell everyone where they can find you online? Yeah. My name is Serene Siren X, S-E-R-E-N-E-S-I-R-E-N-X on Twitter and Instagram. My TikTok is Serene Siren TV and YouTube, I guess, is Serene Siren 1956. I might be changing that soon because I didn't realize I had a number after it, but you know. <laughs> and if you want to find me on OnlyFans and Loyal Fans, it's just Serene Siren. Fantastic. And then you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, go to hollylinks.com just for direct links to all of my platforms because I, I tried to find myself on Instagram the other day. And oh, yeah, it's hard. When I put in Instagram.com slash Holly Randall, it says that my page is unavailable, but it's not. It's like a shadow band. I mean, yeah, Yeah. I guess so. I mean, like hardcore, though. I didn't realize like they would literally say my page wasn't existing. They're not being very nice to us. They really aren't. So go to hollylinks.com because then you can actually literally go straight to all of the the URLs. It might also be that you need to put the at. Like Instagram.com slash at was never Holly like Randall? that before. And uh, okay. other people are not like that. I think that. that might be TikTok. Then. That is TikTok. Okay. Yes. Okay. Basically, Instagram just. Fuck yeah. You. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> and of course, to support this podcast and watch these interviews live and submit questions for my guests, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure that you go and follow Serene on all of her socials. Drop her a line. Tell her that you saw her here on the show so she knows it wasn't a waste of her time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.